In this lecture, you will learn what is life cycle hook in Angular and what are the different types of life cycle hook Angular provides. So, the life cycle hook are the methods that Angular invokes on the directives and components as it creates, changes, and destroys them. Now, when a new component is created in Angular and when it finds one of the selectors, it will instantiate the new version of that component and it will add it to the DOM. For example, here we are using the selector of product component. And here we have used the selector three times. So Angular will instantiate the products component three times. Okay, so every time Angular finds a component selector, it will instantiate that component class. Now, once a new component class is instantiated, Angular goes through different phases in this creation process. And it also gives us a chance to actually hook into these phases and execute some code. And we can hook into these phases by implementing some methods which Angular will call if they are present in the component class. And these methods are called as Angular lifecycle hooks. Okay, so when the Angular application starts, it first creates and renders the root component. Then it creates and renders its children's and their children's. And in this way, it forms a tree of components. Once Angular loads the component, it starts the process of rendering the view. To do that, it needs to check the input properties, evaluate the data bindings and expressions, render the projected content, etc. Angular also removes the component from the DOM when it is no longer needed. And Angular lets us know when these events happens using lifecycle hooks. For example, Angular initializes the component for the first time. In that case, ng-on-init method gets called. And this ng-on-init is one lifecycle hook. In the same way, when a component's input property changes, Angular invokes ng-on-changes. And this ng on changes is another lifecycle hook in Angular. And if the component is destroyed, Angular invokes ng on destroy. And again, this ng on destroy is another lifecycle hook in Angular. So let's briefly understand what are all the lifecycle hooks which Angular provides and when they are called. But before diving into the lifecycle hooks, we need to understand what is change detection cycle. So the change detection is the mechanism by which Angular keeps the template in sync with the component. For example, let's say in the view template of our component, we have this div. And inside this div, we are using the name property of the component class. Now, Angular will update the DOM every time the value of this name property will change. And it does it instantly. Now, the question is, how does Angular will know when the value of this name property will change? It does so by running a change detection cycle on every event that may result in a change in DOM. Okay, so it runs it on every input change, DOM events, timer events like set timeout and set interval, HTTP requests, etc. During the change detection cycle, Angular checks each and every bound property in the template with the component class. And if it detects any change, it will update the DOM. And during this process, Angular raises the lifecycle hooks during the important stages of change detection mechanism. Now, before we talk about lifecycle hooks, there are a couple of terms which you need to understand. The first term is projected content. Projected content is that HTML content which replaces the ng content directive in the child component. So we talked about ng content in our previous lecture. So let's say in the child component, we are using this ng content directive. And when we are using the selector of this child component, as you can see here, inside this, we have specified some HTML content, right? So we have specified a paragraph in this example. So this paragraph element here, this paragraph here is the projected content. Because this content will, you know, it will be projected in place of ng content directive. Okay. So the HTML content which we specify within the component selector is called as projected content. 
Then you also need to understand what is input bound properties. Input bound properties are those properties of a component class which is decorated with at input decorator. For example, let's say in the child component we have this message property and we have decorated this message property with this at input decorator. So here this message property is the input bound property. All right. So now let's understand different life cycle hooks of Angular. So the life cycle hook of a component or a directive begins when Angular creates the component or the directive class. And the first method that gets invoked is the class constructor. Now remember that constructor is neither a lifecycle hook nor it is specific to Angular. It is a JavaScript feature and it is a method which gets invoked when a class is created. Angular makes use of constructor to inject dependencies. Also remember that when a constructor is called, at that point, none of the component's input properties are updated and available to use. Neither its child components are constructed and projected contents are also not available. And that's why there is not much you can do in this method. And also it's not recommended to use it. Once Angular instantiates the class, it kickstarts the first lifecycle hook of a component or a directive creation. And the first phase or the first hook of a component or a directive creation is ng on changes. This lifecycle hook is ex executed right at the start when a new component is created and it also gets executed whenever one of the bound input property changes. Angular invokes ng on changes lifecycle hook whenever any data bound input property of the component or the directive changes. Input properties are those properties which we define using at input decorator and it is one of the ways by which a parent component communicates with its child component. So here in the child component, we have a input bound property called message. And then we are binding this message property of the child component with the message property of parent component. Now, whenever the value of this message property will change, this ng on changes lifecycle hook will be called. So initializing the input property is the first task that Angular carries during the change detection cycle. And if it detects any change in the input property, then it raises this ng on changes hook. And it does so during every change detection cycle. And remember that this hook will not get raised if the change detection does not detect any change in the input bound property. Okay. So the change detector checks if the input property of a component is changed by the parent component, then it raises this ng on changes hook. Otherwise, it will not raise this ng on changes hook. So remember that this ng on changes lifecycle hook gets raised at the very beginning when the Angular project starts and also every time when the input bound property value changes. After ng on changes, the next lifecycle hook is ng on init. Angular raises ng on init hook after it creates the component and updates its input properties. This hook is raised after the ng on changes hook. And remember that this hook is fired only once and immediately after its creation. That means during the first change detection. And this is a perfect place where you want to add any initialization logic for your component. And here you have access to every input property of the component. You can use them in HTTP GET request to get data from the backend server or run some initialization logic inside this lifecycle hook. But remember that none of the child components or projected content are available at this point during ng on init lifecycle hook. Okay. Hence, any properties we decorate with at view child, at view children, at content child, and at content children will not be available to use during ng on init lifecycle hook. Then we have ng do check lifecycle hook. Angular invokes ng do check hook during every change detection cycle. Okay, so this hook is invoked even if there is no change in any of the input bound properties. Okay, so for example, 
this ng on changes life cycle hook that gets called every time when there is a change in the input bound property but this ng do check will get called every time a change detection cycle runs even if there is no change in the input bound properties so for example ng do check will run if you click a button on the web page which does not change anything but still since it's an event and when an event happen angular has to check if something has changed in the dom and for that ng do check method has to be called angular invokes ng do check life cycle hook after ng on changes and ng on init hooks you can use this hook to implement a custom change detection whenever angular fails to detect the changes made to the input properties ng do check is also a great method to use when you want to execute some code on every change detection cycle okay after ng do check ng after content init life cycle hook gets executed ng after content init life cycle hook is called after the component's projected content has been fully initialized during this life cycle hook angular also updates the properties decorated with content child and content children before raising this hook and this hook is also raised even if there is no content to project and the content here refers to the external content injected from the parent component via content projection so angular components can include ng content element which acts as a placeholder for the content from a parent so here in this example we have a child component and inside this child component we are using ng content now in place of this ng content the parent component injects the content between the opening and closing selector element so angular passes this content to the child component for example in the parent component between the opening and closing component selector we have this paragraph element so this paragraph element will be injected in place of ng content okay so this ng after content in it life cycle hook gets called when this content is fully initialized now remember that this life cycle hook gets called only once during the first change detection cycle after that if this projected content changes this life cycle hook will not get called so let's say if the content of this paragraph element changes in that case this life cycle hook will not get called it will only get called during the first change detection cycle after this life cycle hook the ng after content checked life cycle hook gets executed and this life cycle hook is called during every change detection cycle after angular finishes checking the component's projected content now angular also update the properties decorated with at content child and at content content children before raising this hook and angular calls this hook even if there is no projected content in the component and this hook is very similar to ng after content in it okay so this ng after content checked is very similar to ng after content in it both of these hooks are called after the external content is initialized checked and updated and by external content i mean the projected content now the only difference between ng after content checked and ng after content in it is that ng after content checked is raised after every change detection cycle while ng after content in it is raised during the first change detection cycle so i told you that this ng after content in it will be raised only once during the first change detection cycle and after that if there is any change in the projected content this life cycle hook will not get raised but ng after content checked gets raised after you know during each change detection cycle so whenever there is a change in the projected content at that time this ng after content checked will be raised now if this does not make any sense right now then don't worry we will understand each of these life cycle hooks practically in our next lecture okay one more thing which you need to remember here is that this ng after content in it and ng after content checked is component only hook they are not applicable on directives then we have ng after view init life cycle hook and 
this hook is called after the components view and all its child views are fully initialized. Angular also updates the properties decorated with at view child and at view children properties before raising this hook. And the view here refers to the view template of the current component and all its child components and directives. This hook is called during the first change detection cycle where Angular initializes the view for the first time. And at this point, all the lifecycle hook methods and change detections of all child components and directives are processed and component is completely ready. And this hook is also component only hook. Okay, so this ng after view init lifecycle hook gets called when all the view of the component and its child component has been initialized. And this lifecycle hook also gets called only once during the first change detection cycle. If there is any change after the first change detection cycle in the view, at that time, this lifecycle hook will not get called. And after this lifecycle hook, we have ng after view checked. This lifecycle hook also gets fired after it checks and updates the components view and child views. And this hook is fired after the ng after view in it. And after that, it gets fired during every change detection cycle. Okay, so this hook is very similar to ng after view in it. Both are called after all the child component and directives are initialized and updated. Only difference is that ng after view checked is raised during every change detection cycle, while ng after view in it is raised during only the first change detection cycle. So as I mentioned, this ng after view in it will get called during the first change detection cycle. And if there is any change in the view after that change detection cycle, this ng after view in it will not get called. But this ng after view check will co get called for each change in the view. And this hook is also component only hook. It is not applicable for directives. And finally, we have ng on destroy lifecycle hook. So if you destroy a component, for example, when you place ng if on a component and this ng if then gets set to false, at that time ng if will remove that component from the DOM. And at that time ng on destroy gets called. So this hook is a great place to do some cleanup work because this is called right before the object will get destroyed. Okay, and this is the right place where you would like to unsubscribe observables, detach event handlers, to avoid memory leaks. And this ng on destroy is the last lifecycle hook of a component or a directive. Okay, so just remember that this ng on destroy gets called just before the component or the directive gets destroyed. So this is a very high level overview of all the lifecycle hooks in Angular. And we will learn about all these lifecycle hooks in practice in our next lecture. And I promise you that all the doubts which you have from this lecture that will get cleared in the next lecture. And also, I will share these slides and a cheat sheet related to Angular lifecycle hooks in the description. So you can download it and keep it for your reference. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.